good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you very much for inviting me to give this talk and workshop on spiritual activism in medical schools. I'm going to share my screen now. So the talk for the British Psychological Society Conference in 2021. My background is I've practiced spiritual activism in medical schools and hospital for the last 15 years until the present day. And then I'm teaching more another eight week course for medical students in Brighton and Sussex in October and November this year. This workshop presents the current toolkit that I'm using that's relevant to spiritual activism and it's one that I use with medical students and hospital staffs. My plan for this workshop is to offer a 15 minute presentation a background to my practice of teaching and training, like to hear in introductions of who's in the room with me today, even on Zoom, like to hear about each person's skills, and then we'll brainstorm your own experience and how we might each use spiritual activism in our place of work or where we are in society. Now I'll go over the course content. It's an eight week course and it explores the importance of personal beliefs about a human being. And it's relevant for clients who access medical and healthcare services, for frontline service providers and activists in spiritual awareness. The learning objectives are to explore spiritual and cultural explanatory models for human experiences, things like birth, death, mental health and well-being, and to develop a positive awareness of cross-cultural understandings of the human body. The aim is to reduce social inequalities, to raise awareness of spiritual activism and of cultural beliefs which influence people's access to healthcare. So this workshop will present the structure of the course that I've run, the topics and how I'm assessing it, and we'll introduce beliefs which might influence access to healthcare. I'll present the Train the Trainers resource pack that I've developed, funded by the Scientific and Medical Network and we'll explore ways to practice spiritual activism that we can each do. So the aim is to raise awareness of transferable strategies, to develop spiritual activism with medical and healthcare staff, and activism to benefit people, patients and carers, anyone who uses the services. So my background lies within medical anthropology. The key points are that there's, we understand cultural diversity and that there are plural narratives for health. There is more than one way of understanding ourselves. I'll explore what it means to be a new migrant or refugee and variable existential beliefs about what it means to be a person. So the next couple of slides, I'm covering the topics that I you do within the talk. So we look at what is spirituality and the various me meanings and different cultures and its relevance for human existence. We'll look at women and culture and things that women may experience that influence their well-being, like female genital mutilation, honour, rape and silence, issues that concern women. Also do a session on conception and birth 
and the many explanations that people have for conception and making babies. We look at different practices at birth and beliefs about the soul and spirit. We'll also consider fetus gender identification and abortion. The following section looks at the normal body. What is normal? We look at cross-cultural beliefs about the human body, its properties and faculties, and kind of people's beliefs about what causes illness. Also cover issues around death and dying and cultural concepts of good and bad death. And then the following session is beyond death. What do people believe happens after death? What happens to consciousness? And what's its relevance for the living? Then we've got another session on mental health and different cultural explanations for distress. And we look at religious health seeking strategies. And the final session of eight considers anomalous or unusual experiences which may occur in healthcare setting. So those eight weeks are the key sessions of the workshop, but I can also make it over nine or ten weeks looking at what it what does it mean to be a migrant. I ask the students to assess the project by presentation. I ask them to select one topic of those eight and then imagine that they are invited to develop an educational program for medical school curriculum to raise awareness of cultural ways of considering health. So their new educational course, they should say the background to it, explain their personal reasons for having it within the medical program and say where in the community, in the curriculum that they would teach it. So the next few slides, I've got one or two slides on each topic instead of 20 or 30 on each topic. So the kinds of things that we'll look at is body, health and illness, women and culture, beliefs about conception, mental health and consciousness, religious and spiritual experiences, death and dying, beliefs about consciousness beyond death. We'll look at new migrants and refugees. And I'll look at the topic of cultural U-turns, how society decides something is law and then changes its mind. So I've literally got one or two slides for each topic. So we'll look at the body and popular beliefs around the body. We'll explore what's perfect, what's normal, and we'll explore different case studies from Africa, South America, China, and people's belief about the causes of ill health. And we'll also look at spare body parts. The photo on the left is a sculpture from the Welcome Collection in London. It's a 17th century anatomical model of uh, what happens inside a woman's body. And the photo on the right is the demonstration patient that medical students can try out their techniques on. In the session on women, culture and spirituality, we explore things that women experience that influence their well-being. So things like child brides, um, forced and arranged marriage, concept of honour and shame. We look at circumcision and cutting, female genital mutilation, concept of rape and silence and conception. So this is a very speedy run through the kind of things that I cover in the course. Then under conception and human identity, we'll look at fetus gender selection and abortion and how it's relevant. We'll look at cultural explanations for conception and how babies are made. And we'll look at what are the components of a newborn? 
what makes up is it just skin and bones is it consciousness is it vitality vital force so we we'll look at those issues under conception and the kind of things we'll cover with regarding human existence we we'll look at the person and the self the body and its faculties the nature of human existence consciousness after death non-physical entities life before birth and non-local mind. So we'll look at multiple cultural frameworks and this assumption around superiority uh, with regard to my knowledge and your beliefs. And we'll look at common consensus and how that influences health. Moving swiftly on, We'll look at unusual experiences, religious and spiritual, and we'll aim to explore the different experiences and the different terms that people use in Western society, mostly. We'll have look at the archive of people's stories, like the Alistair Hardy archive, and different interpretations of experiences. So we'll look at the nature of reality and health. So experiences that may occur in a healthcare setting, which can be spontaneous end of life experiences, religious experiences, near death experiences, out of body experiences, and then negative experiences and assumptions around mental health and expanded consciousness. We'll explore what does it mean to have a belief system and we note that all things are subject to interpretation and whichever interpretation prevails at a given time is a function of power and not truth. These were the comments of Friedrich Nietzsche. And the question is, are, is there any truth that is not culturally determined? With regard to belief systems, we'll explore what is a paradigm a model or pattern of reality or a set of assumptions that we have on how we understand the world. Paradigm blindness is where some of us can't see beyond our own paradigm. It's um, intrinsic to us and therefore invisible. And the old assumption, the common assumption that my belief is better than yours, my knowledge base is more correct than yours. Now we'll have a swift look at global mental health. I just pick out two concepts, two meanings of it. One is the export of biomedical diagnosis and treatment models, adherence to the DSM um, in order to promote agreed symptoms and pharmaceutical treatment strategies. The other meaning of global mental health is the export of understanding about cultural models of diagnosis and treatment in order to promote cultural collaboration and interpretation of meaning and illness. And I give just two examples of books, one by China Mills, looking at decolonizing global mental health, and one by Ethan Waters, Crazy Like Us, which look at the globalization of Western mind. We take a look at cultural diversity and how our understanding of it may just be the tip of the iceberg. So we understand about feasts and fasts and festivals, um, language, rituals, hair, excuse me, hairstyles. Um, they're all elements of cultural diversity, but there are deeper aspects, <coughs> excuse me, like family, history, trauma, uh, colonization, gender inequalities, and there are we acknowledge the wide um, cultural differences that may occur between first gen generation, second, and third generation migrants, and how just having a calendar up about diversity and festivals is not enough. So take a look at migrant and refugee groups. And particularly for first generation migrants, we look at the diagnosis of symptoms and 
how people interpret the symptoms or the conditions that they have and they may be quite different in different cultures and some may interpret their condition as requiring treatment from religious practitioners in a church temple or mosque rather than from clinical practitioners and it may delay people requesting help from the health service practitioners. So migration is, is a big issue because religious and spiritual practices are very important in daily life, particularly for first generation people. And those who are forced to migrate from a country of origin or from where their ancestors are buried may be more at risk from experiencing episodes of stress, anxiety or mental ill health. And forced migration may be the result of war or trauma or beliefs which are incompatible with the ruling parties which might result in imprisonment and it's also problems of living away from the support of the extended family and friends can increase social isolation. Then in this speedy overview we'll look at concepts of death and dying and cultural beliefs about what happens after death. We'll look at issues like expected death, good and bad deaths, active dying rituals in different countries and beliefs about consciousness after death and results of sudden death. And I've chosen this photo of a painting by Raymond Douillet, a French artist who paints the, the cycle of um, the birth, and childhood and adulthood and old age and then going back to the earth and I do like his paintings. Then I've got a couple of slides about survival beyond death, about what people believe happens after we die. So and the implications for people who remain. So how many cultural beliefs, what kind of cultural beliefs are there about consciousness beyond? And again, we'll look at these topics around consciousness beyond death, as we've done before, loss and bereavement, end of life, near death experiences, out of body, and then beliefs about life after death, like reincarnation and organ memory. So, with regard to cultural beliefs about beyond death, there are beliefs that an individual does not die with the human body. These are widespread beliefs. They include beliefs that ancestors can sit, continue to exert influence over their living relatives, or that jinn are discarnate beings which can influence the mental health of the living. So the explanations we have influence how we understand mental health and expanded consciousness. I usually end the sessions by looking at cultural U-turns, which I find quite interesting. A cultural U-turn is when a government realise that its laws, or in our case its statutes, were made in error people criminalised and it changes its mind and so decades later change governments change their minds about what is correct what is normal they revoke their laws and apologize for earlier actions this can be sometimes centuries after an act so cultural u-turns are very interesting now just the last few slides, we'll look at the resource, resource pack that I developed which was funded by the Scientific and Medical Network. I look at cultural equalities and it's a training pack um, for medical and healthcare and social care for frontline service providers. Um, it's a vision for social inclusion. So my hope is that others can adapt the information in it and add to it with their knowledge. So in each topic of the resource pack, there's a printout of the slide presentation. There's the aims and outcomes of the sessions, the seminar structure, 
suggested reading, discussion exercises and case studies. And as I say, I'm hoping other people can use it. So my question to everybody is, what aspects of spiritual activism do you consider most important for medicine and healthcare? So for the rest of the workshop, we'll look at any other questions and then explore, given your own experience, how might you use or adapt this kind of material in your place of work? And how might you add to the topics with your specific knowledge, your particular knowledge? And thank you very much. So this is the end of the slide presentation and I look forward to hearing from you on the day. Thank you very much for participating. That's great. Thank you.